uh, for the Arizona Department of Transportation. This means he has the pleasure of talking to groups like ours about the customer service improvements being made by the Motor Vehicle Department. That wasn't me, I swear. Uh, Doug joined ADOT in 2016, but he's worked with similar groups in uh, Arizona since 2003. He has uh, worked for several elected officials and in a misspent youth was a radio newsman in Phoenix, apparently. It's true. He is an Arizona native. He and his wife, Gail, live in Gilbert, not Chandler. They have I'll, two children I'll, I'll, and three grandchildren, all of whom, thankfully, live nearby. Please join me in introducing Doug Nick with ADOT. Thank you. Of course. Well done, Aaron. Thank you. Well, good morning. Thanks for having me here. I, I do appreciate it. Uh, I am an Arizona native, born in Phoenix, grew up in the Scottsdale, Paradise Valley area. If you'd have told me one day that I'd have lived in Gilbert when I was in high school in the 1970s, um, actually, uh, I would have had to look up Gilbert because <laughs> back then it wasn't too big. But uh, I will make up for my lack of Chandler residence by letting you know that my daughter, her husband, and three children live just down the road. Uh, in Chandler and they love it. So um, I, I am in Chandler quite a bit and my wife and I love coming downtown, going to the Perch and uh, Santan Brewery. So we're, we're, we're putting a few shekels in your coffers here, which uh, I think you're all about. So that's a good thing. Um, I want to start real quickly because uh, with, with something that may, uh, may seem a little bit odd. And if you know the answer to this, I'm going to give you a little bit of a test, okay? And I, I, it's not the driver license test or anything like that, so you're going to be fine. Um, but it's a test about perception. And some of you may have heard this before. And if you have, just kind of just sit back for a moment. And if you know the answer to the question, when I give you the question, please just, just you might want to raise your hand, but don't blurt it out just yet. So, okay? So are you ready? I mean, I know it's early, and we're kind of getting the caffeine to work, but, but are you ready for this? Okay, okay. So here's, here's, here's the, the problem. You're driving a bus, okay? And you go two miles, you pick up four people. You go four miles, you pick up six people. And then you go another six miles, you pick up eight people. What's the age of the bus driver? 29. All right, now, I, okay. It's early. I, it's Friday. You know, we've had a busy week. I, I'm, I really apologize. Maybe I shouldn't have done this because I know it, it could be tough. Let me try one more time. You're driving a bus. You go two miles, you pick up, you got it, okay. You go two miles, you pick up four passengers. Six miles, you pick up eight passengers. Eight, eight, miles, eight miles, you pick up ten passengers, right? Okay. What's the age of the driver? We have one person who knows. Okay. Two. Remember, this is about perception. So let me just, just one more time. Please indulge me, okay? <laughs> and and maybe just one more time, and I think probably get it. Here's the, here's the test. You are driving a bus. Go two miles, pick four, band, four miles, six times. What's the age of the driver of the bus? 39. Right, 39 or 20. The reason I do that is, it's all about perception. You did not, you just kind of, the natural inclination is, the first thing is you're driving a bus and you're like, okay, whatever. And you're going to go to the math portion because you're thinking that's where the, the, the business end of this is. But the business end was at the beginning. And that was the answer. The rest was irrelevant. Well, the perception of the Motor Vehicle Division and what are in other states called DMVs is usually iceberg or ice glacier slow service and just the sixth circle of Hades and all that stuff. And we'd like to disabuse you of that notion. So we are the Motor Vehicle Division. And yes, we have a vision, believe it or not, a government agency with a vision. I, I think you'll like it to get you out of line and safely on the road because who likes to be in any line really? And I mean, I'd like to go to Disneyland where I walk right on, like that's gonna happen. And nobody likes to go to the MVD because, well, it's a drag, and we know that. We freely admit that nobody really wants to be there. Our employees do, but you probably don't. So how are we doing this? Well, we are constantly looking at ways to improve the customer service experience. And I want, my, my, my title is Assistant Communications Director for Customer Outreach. You are our customers. You are taxpayers, but you are our customers. If you think of ADOT, everybody drives on the freeway or the state highway up to Payson or whatever, <clears throat> but MVD is the customer-facing portion of ADOT. And so we look at you not as a number or just a face, but you're a customer. We want to serve you better. So we're doing more things uh, online, by phone, or through the mail. Now, as business owners, and some of you might be in corporate situations, 
I don't know, has anybody here heard of the Arizona management system? Okay, well that's one reason I'm here. The Arizona management system is uh, a system that is based on lean principles. You've probably heard of lean or Six Sigma or ISO, those type of things. This is lean management. Uh, and every state agency is under uh, a mandate from the governor to implement lean procedures. And what that means is we are empowering every employee to come up with innova innovations, changes, improvements, efficiencies, and the like. And MBD is certainly no exception. We have a head count of just a little more than 850 positions at MBD. That's not customer service positions entirely. Obviously, we have support staff and so forth. Um, but every one of them is empowered each and every day to come up with ideas to make the offices run more smoothly. And the most basic of these is called a Kaizen. Has anybody ever heard that term? Okay, a few of you have. It's a Japanese term. Again, a Toyota uses this. There's the Japanese character for it, Kaizen. Kaizen can be used as a noun or a verb, but it's basically change for the better. Kaizen, change for the better. And every MBD office are, measures quite a few things. But the, the number one thing that we measure at MBD offices is how long does it take you to cross the threshold of an MBD office when you walk in at whatever time of day you walk in until you walk out and you go off and do whatever you want to do, go to one of the fine businesses in Chandler and spend some money, right? I mean, seriously, that's what we, we want to give people the chance to go out and be productive, not just stand in line. So we are uh, using Kaizen's to help innovate new ways to accomplish how to get you in and out the door or make it so that you don't even have to come in. So I want to show you a picture here of an office down in Sierra Vista. <clears throat> As you can see, this was about a month ago when I took this photo. As you can see, it's a fairly mid-sized office. And what do you see here? You see people sitting down in chairs, and you can barely tell, but there are numbers right here. And if you've been to the MVD, you know that when you walk in, you get a deli ticket, and it has a number and a letter on it. And then you sit down, and you wait for that to be called. And you hear this disembodied computer voice kind of creepily saying, A119. A119 or C135 or whatever. And, um, and so you sit there and you wait for that. And you're on your smart device or you're reading a novel or you know, you're doing your taxes now, whatever you're going to do. And you wait and you wait and you wait. And hopefully you're not waiting too long, but you're sitting there. Well, so this, this is the office, uh, an office that has not quite yet done a Kaizen, which we call silent call. And so this is the, an example of the typical Q system that many of you are probably familiar with. So what is silent call. Well, it's used in all of the urban and many rural offices, so every office in Tucson and Phoenix, including the Chandler office over here near 56th and the Chandler Boulevard, uses what's called silent call. And what it does is we have eliminated the creepy computer voice. This person is out of a job. Fortunately, it's just like Siri. <laughs> She'll find a job elsewhere. And the service director we don't quite do it the exact way as this photo shows anymore, but the, the concept is still similar. We, we have this resource at MVD. It's a resource we've had for a long time. And as part of our review of how we do business, um, we looked at this resource and we said, hmm, this is useful. We have a lot of them. They're called human beings. And the last time we did some research on it was that human beings can talk to each other generally and they can help one another rather than make people sit down helplessly while they wait to go up to a counter and then find out that what they've got is somehow wrong or they missed a signature, they don't have a document they need. And so we have people that are there to help while you, when you come in, you still get the deli ticket and the letter on that is what denotes what kind of, I knew this would happen, I'm getting spam phone calls on this thing. And that is so annoying. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> it's, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, so where I was, the, the, deli, the, the, the letters denote what kind of transaction you have, whether it's title work or registration, a new license, whatever it might be. So you still get that. But now you will be directed to um, a line where it's maybe the A line or the B line, and you wait until you, uh, a customer service representative is available. And as a result, in the middle of that, the service director or an ADOT employee or an MVD employee is talking to you. What are you having done, sir, ma'am? Oh, you need title work? You know what? You're good to go. Everything is in order. You're going to be fine. And you get up to the window six to eight minutes, which is 
pretty much what it takes for any transaction, mostly, unless it's really complicated, and then you're out the door. Uh, or they could say, you know what, sir, you, you're missing whatever. You're missing this, or you need to get this notarized. You're not standing there wasting your time. You do need to leave, get it taken care of, and come back. And, and that way you haven't wasted 40 minutes of your life sitting there and finding that out at the last minute. So lines are shorter, the offices are quieter, which means a lot to people. We've got all these assaults on our senses these days. We've taken out that computer voice, at least, and quieted things down. So um, I've been driving around the state quite a bit, as you can see. This is Cottonwood MVD office. I literally drove up to this at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, about June, I think. I really wondered if we were open. It was that quiet. And that's because we implemented silent call in Cottonwood. And the experience time has gone down to about 15 or 20 minutes. That means the, the customers here, you can see a handful here, they're walking in the door and no more than 15 or 20 minutes later, on average, there are exceptions, but on average, they're getting out of there. There's the Glendale MVD office, as you can see. And, and yeah, you know, I could take pictures at, at perfect times and show them to you, but you'll just have to take it on, on faith that, yeah, there are exceptions, but this is not an unusual site. It's not that crowded. There are exceptions. Again, Mondays and Fridays, probably going to be busier. Tucson Regional, we did a Kaizen down there. Okay, the office that was laid out, you funnel people off one way over here or one way over here, and it was, it was just not great. And we couldn't change it completely. But one of the things we did was we had a chance to remodel down there. This is the greeter station. I'm not, the photos don't show from the same perspective, but I'll give you an idea. So these are right here. See this wall right here? This wall was blocking traffic from this side of the building to this side of the building where we had customer service people. We had other physical barriers that were there. And we had people that would come up to this office right here and do what they are now doing here with two people with no wall. And as you see, there's not much of a line there. And this is middle of the day on like a Wednesday in Tucson at a huge office. So this was all developed within the offices. This isn't the leadership of the agency saying, you will do this. This was people within the offices, managers or even just the, the, the newest employees could even say, something over here is not working. Let's change it. And we like that so much that we actually have cash incentives. They're not huge, but we do have some cash incentives that if you come up with ideas that are effective, you might get you know, a couple of bucks to incentivize all these Kaizens. It could, a Kaizen could be as simple as saying, you know what, it would be better if we put the, the coffee and drinks at this side of the room. I'm not saying that, but I'm, you know, it's, it could be that simple or it could be much more complicated. We need, to, we need to redesign the building to the extent we can. So as a result of these innovations and these efficiencies, uh, which happen at every level, the average experience time at Tucson and Phoenix offices, 66% of our business, as you can well imagine, is in Phoenix or Tucson and Tucson, has averaged about 20 minutes. A year ago, um, or a little more than a year ago, it was nearly an hour. So we've more than cut it in half from a year ago just by making some of these changes. Um, and many offices show even lower times. And the rural offices that have implemented uh, silent call uh, have seen similar results. And not, not every office will, in the rural communities will have it. Some offices are only open two days a week and so forth. Um, but, but we're on our way to doing it more. Gemba walks. Anybody heard of a Gemba walk? Kind of a weird name. A Gemba walk is kind of a, a fancy way of saying, I'm the manager, and I'm encouraged to go see what my employees are doing in wherever their workspace is. And this could be, you know, if you're a manager and you've got one workspace, that's real easy. If you're the director of MVD, Eric, he needs to go to places like Lake Havasu, Tucson, Page, Littlefield. In fact, going up to Littlefield with him. If you know, you know where Littlefield is, yes. Right up there near Vegas, actually. A little sliver of Arizona up there. Anyway, a gimbal walk is designed uh, so that the, the leader can see the space where work is being done to see just what his or her people are facing each and every day. How are they doing their job? What is their job? Uh, this is the director of uh, ADOT, John Halakowski, this gentleman right here. And he's down, and, and right back here is our deputy director, Scott Omer. And they're touring the Tucson Regional Office, showing that, in, that interior renovation. He wants to see how is this improved, or is it improving the way things are being done down here. And that way, he has a, a solid understanding. He'll go to the sign shop. He's been to the, to the, uh, the port of entry up in Topak to see how our enforcement people check on the, the uh, big rigs that come in. And he's done a lot of other things. He actually came up through the agency. 
So here he is again, kind of a goofy look on his face, and he probably would be mad if I showed you. But he's in the office, and he's listening to our employees, and he's also showing off some new office space and how we do things. And it's all just designed to ensure that managers are uh, measured to do this on a regular basis. We actually have what are called huddle boards that show metrics of all si kinds, and they're different for every office. Uh, and one of them is for managers, are you doing these gimbal walks? Have you, for MVD, in MVD's case, how often has our director visited Littlefield and Page and, and West Phoenix and all that? And, it, and if it goes into the red, he's late. <clears throat> and, that, and, and red is a good thing in that you know, okay, I gotta address this. Um, the ultimate purpose is that um, we're not there to judge what these people are doing. The manager is not there to go in and crack the whip or, or put down the hammer or any other cliche you can think of. They're there to experience what their people experience. So it's very hands-on. So how have we brought change to MVD? Um, we're, again, we're using a full headcount. I know that when you hear a lot about things like lean management and ISO and all that, you think, okay, they're going to go in and they're going to lay off staff and so forth. That is not the purpose of this at all. But the purpose of this is to set up a process where people can, can do the things they need to do because they can see empirically the measurements, and, but they still have the personal touch of being able to come up with ideas on their own. And a lot of these can be done, for example, if you're going to go over the metrics for the day at, at an MVD office, it's called a huddle board, like I mentioned, well, how many people did we have yesterday? How fast did we get them in and out the door? And other challenges they may face. If the manager is on vacation, the second in command can easily run that meeting. If that person is gone sick, an average person in that office, it's so simple, they can run that meeting, and it's five, 10 minutes, you're not there to, to solve every problem in the world, but you're getting an idea of where are we, where are our challenges, and where are our successes, and how can we continue our successes. Uh, so it's all designed to make things more efficient and save taxpayer dollars. What are some of our initiatives? Here's Tucson, office hours. We uh, expanded the office hours at our urban offices. We started this in Tucson. So down there and now in all of Phoenix, the doors open at 7.30 instead of 8 o'clock. Why does that matter? Well, there's some, a certain amount of psychology to that. Um, for some reason, uh, people don't queue up at the bottom of the hour nearly as much as they queue up at the top of the hour. They, you know, everybody wants to get there, be first in line, so they get in and out of the place. Open it up at 7.30, we tend to see less of that. It doesn't go away completely, but we see less of it. There's also another benefit to that. We give more flexibility to our employees. We're open from 7.30 to 5. We can bring in some of our employees before 7.30 so they can get the place set up and ready to go. Some of them can come in right at 7.30, some at 8 o'clock. You're all getting where I'm going here. You own businesses. So if you can bring in your employees at a staggered rate, what can you do in the middle of the day? You can stagger the lunch hour. When is the biggest crunch time for an MVD office? Lunch hour. Beginning of the day, the end of the day, but lunch hour. If you've got half your employees off at Burger King, which we love, um, if, if, if they're doing that, they're not serving customers and you've got a crunch at lunch. But if you can divide their time by a little more staggered, um, you can get more people staffing the counters, more people through the business. And you also have a lot of the paperwork tasks that accumulate for our employees at these offices during the day. If you have more people handling those things, they're not tasks that customers ever see. But if, if you're able to more evenly deal with those, at the end of the day, you have fewer people staying late to catch up on paperwork, right? So we've got customer satisfaction up, wait times are down, and that part I just mentioned about how the paperwork tasks are more evenly distributed, we don't have people staying so late. We've cut overtime in Tucson by 80%. I don't have figures yet for Phoenix because we've started this just a few months ago, but I'm guessing if we're even halfway there, we're saving you money. Something that started in Tucson, an idea that a Tucson MVD person had is something we're implementing through all the urban offices. We're not doing them at the smaller rurals, but we don't need it so much there. Uh, it's saving taxpayer dollars, and I think you would all agree that's probably a good thing. So did you know that 51% of what you need to do with us you can do on a smartphone, your Android, uh, you can do it by phone or by mail? And actually that number has increased. I don't have a percentage to quantify it. I'm just going to guess it's 53. But it's more than half. And we think this thing called the internet might actually have legs, so we thought we might use it more. Um, you know, if you can buy wine and auto parts and do your banking and pay your utilities on the web, why can't you work with MVD? Well, you can. ServiceArizona.com is our portal. Anybody here heard of ServiceArizona.com? I hope most of you have. It's been around for a while. And what can you do at ServiceArizona.com? Well, a lot. Uh, you can register your vehicle or re-register your vehicle, I should say, and that usage is up 15% in the last year. It's by far our most popular um, 
um, transaction. You can get a replacement order, a replacement license or ID. It will be mailed to you. Uh, you can change your address, which you should do within 10 days. By the way, that's the law. If you, not that anybody here would ever go anything other than the speed limit and be law-abiding citizens. <clears throat> Um, but if you were to happen to slip and you had not changed your address within 10 days, you will be getting two love letters from the finest in blue, uh, not just one. So we highly recommend that. Uh, you can order a specialty or a personal plate. Anybody here have a specialty or a personalized plate? Excellent. Uh, by, the, by the way, I'll get to a little bit in a, in a minute a little bit more about that. If you're a veteran, thank you for your service. Um, if you do want to get a veteran's plate, Um, that would be something you could bring up with your state legislature. <laughs> Punt that away. Um, but we have made it more convenient in the last year. If, as veterans, uh, it used to be that you would have to come in with your uh, DOD and other uh, forms to the MVD office to prove that you're a, a, a veteran in standing. Uh, you can now do that online. So we made it easier for our vets to get the veterans' plates. And those veterans' plates, uh, $17, go to the State, Depart state Department of Veterans Services for veterans service programs. And also, if you're not a veteran, but you want to support those same programs, you can get one of those freedom plates, and you've probably seen those. Um, but you can order those online. You can update your insurance. That's a new function within the last few months. You can update your insurance status. Uh, if you get a cancellation letter, you can clear that up online now. Uh, voter registration, we don't keep that information. We f send it right off to the county and the state. But by law, you can register with us. A sold notice, uh, that's kind of a big deal. Uh, I know that uh, where we have kiosks at our courts, the, uh, in Glendale, when we put a kiosk there, there's not one here in Chandler, but uh, the, the presiding judge there was very happy to see the kiosk near her court because so many times people will go in and uh, a car they sold has been involved in uh, maybe it was abandoned or maybe uh, it was used in the commission of a crime, but it wasn't their car anymore, but they didn't file a sold notice, so we called in the most recent owner on file who had nothing to do with that, and the judge said, this is great. Do your sold notice. It's free. Uh, and it will save you some trouble if, if the person you sold it to turns out to be a, a not so nice person who commits a crime or something or abandons it or something like that. Uh, and you can do a lot more. As I mentioned, kiosks, there they are. We have them in, in pretty much all of our MVD offices in the urban areas. Everything you do online, you can do it at a kiosk. Our intern over here, Aaron, had talked about how he went there recently and used it and said some nice things about it. Um, again, they're available in many city court buildings. Unfortunately, not Chandler, but we do have them. They don't cost anything ex extra. In fact, none of our online services we charge extra for. We want you to use an online service. This isn't Ticketmaster, uh, all due respect to Ticketmaster, uh, where you have to pay a convenience fee or something like that. And um, we also have authorized third party vendors. I know some people wonder if they're, if they're legit. They are. Um, they are um, operated by private individuals or businesses. Uh, we like them. They're contracted with us. That We monitor them to make sure they do their jobs right. Um, many of them perform a driver license and title services, but not all of them. They're, you have to meet certain metrics in order to get there. Uh, in fact, 37 locations uh, do take your photo and so forth, but some, some do not. <clears throat> and obviously, many are open on holidays like Columbus Day or days that, that's, that are state holidays. We're not open, but they are, or they'll be open later in the evening and on weekends, and, but they do charge you a little bit more. So. Uh, you, you have to be aware of that. And as you can see, we have them all over the state. Uh, maybe not so much up in the way northern part, but um, it's, you know, as you well know, you put a business where the market will bear. Yes, sir. Are, are there fees uh, determined, predetermined? Uh, there are limits to what they can charge. They might charge something different. There's a minimum and a maximum. Uh, but they all have to be posted prominently. So if you do walk into one, you're not going to be surprised. Hopefully, you will not be surprised. They should be there. And we do monitor that. A um, couple of things we're doing to, to make your life a little bit easier. Road test, not, not too many people in this room probably have to do a road test, but you may know somebody who does, but this will affect you. We now make online appointments so that it takes the guesswork out. So why this matters to you if you're one of our customers, even though a 16-year-old is coming in for a road test, that person, parents, can make the uh, appointment, say, for 2 o'clock on a Friday. Do we have space available? Yes, we do. Great. No, we don't. Okay, let's try another day. So you don't have people coming into the office, A, being disappointed that, oh, you know, we're at capacity, I just wasted a trip to the DMV or MVD, and, um, and, and so there's fewer people in the system, which means those that do have to be there have fewer people to contend with. Um, so as I said, it's a better use of your time. 
Now, I don't know what it is in Chandler, if any of the high schools here still do driver's ed. I know that most of them don't. So people are going to you know, Fred's driving school. It used to be if you went to Fred's driving school, you might come in and we'd say, hey, you're the lucky random customer because Fred's driving school, we wanna make sure you take a road test even though you already took one at Fred's driving school. Um, we decided to get rid of that because we're making the customer be our quality assurance control. That made no sense. It was inconveniencing you, it was inconveniencing us. We have other ways of making sure that Fred's driving school is doing his job. So we got rid of that about a year ago, and we don't test for parallel parking anymore. It's three-point parking, so there was great rejoicing. <laughs> um, if you need to replace your social security card, within the last year we've done this uh, because we are ahead of the curve and being convenient, and our system can talk to their system, and a lot of the information that you have with social security is the same information that we have, that we're very conscious about security, um, but we're one of a few states that actually has the capability for the social security system to talk to us to confirm your identity. So if you happen to lose your social security card, which happened to me once, which is a major drag, uh, instead of having to go to the social security office where their lines are pretty horrific from what I understand, you can do this online. Uh, you do it through the social security administration website. Don't get me wrong, we don't do it through the MVD website, but because their website talks to ours, we can get that done. Um, I mentioned specialty plates. There's a freedom plate right there. We have a bunch of them, uh, and Arizona is pretty generous because in the last fiscal year, which just ended at the end of June, uh, specialty plates raised almost $10 million, and you can see the causes there. Those ASU Sun Devil plates, right, uh, are raise money for scholarships. You've got uh, First Responders is a new one that's done very well, a Route 66 plate, which goes to the Historic Society to preserve Route 66. Um, that's been very popular with the Special Olympics plates. There are about 43 plates out there. Um, the Cardinals uh, do very well, and, um, but by far the most popular uh, is the Veterans Plate, and the Freedom Plate is right behind that, and then there's firefighter support and, and so forth. So go to, our, uh, go to servicearizona.com. You can check it out and see if there's one that fits you. So why are we here? Why do we do what we do? As I mentioned at the beginning, you're our customer. We take that seriously, and that's why I'm here. I appreciate the chance to be here. Um, because uh, we want to be ahead of the curve in innovation and protect, protecting your resources. We serve about 7,300 people a day statewide. Uh, since we've cut wait times by about 33 minutes, our, our geniuses who are better at math than I tell me that's saving about uh, 4,000, I should say, person hours a day. That's our customers, not us, but our customers are saving that kind of time and money. We figure that's worth a lot of money per day. That's going back that's not sitting in an office doing nothing, but that's going back into your businesses, it's going back into your community. These are people that can go home to be with their kids. These can people go walk into a store and buy something. They can get a car repair, they can get a car. Um, they're doing things other than wasting their time in our offices, and the time is given back to you. So you can connect with us on social media. We're engaged in all those places. Uh, you are, again, the customer, and if you have any questions or comments, I'm happy to take some now. But that's my email. My job is to listen to you. So if you have any issues, sir. Yeah, you haven't talked much about driver's licenses. Uh, you have both the <coughs> non-Homeland Security driver's right. license and the Homeland Security Right. License. Actually, um, I do this presentation for Rotary Clubs and Kiwanis, and uh, I do include that part in that presentation. I, I talk more about the, the AMS here because this is a business setting. But I, I'm happy to talk about that. If you if you right. want me to describe a lot that, of people don't realize you can get a homeland security license. Right. So it's called the voluntary travel ID, and um, I was explaining this to your executive director a little bit earlier. The the elevator pitch on this is in about 2005, the federal government, the Congress, passed a law called the Real ID Act, and it it meant that you had to use extra identification such as a passport, a birth certificate, a utility bill, so on and so forth. It's a combination of a lot of things to uh, heighten the security checks when you get a driver's license to ensure that you are who you say you are. You're not some person who doesn't belong here, who doesn't belong to have a driver's license, okay? The federal government uh, passed that law. Not long after that, the Arizona legislature uh, passed a law that said, well, that's all well and good, but we don't want Arizona driver licenses to be a de facto federal identification card. So they passed a law, and it was implemented just a few years ago, that said when you get a standard driver license, 
uh, from the Arizona MVD that will say not for federal identification on it. Um, so some of you probably, if you've gotten renewed in the last year or two, probably have that on there. And again, that's because the state legislature did not want the driver license to be essentially a federal ID. However, they did say if you want to voluntarily get an ID that is compliant with the real ID act, you may do so, and you may. You can come in anytime you want. We suggest that if you have your license coming up for renewal in the next few months or years, uh, and you want to, uh, I shouldn't say upgrade, but you want to go to that, uh, you may do so. Or if you want to just come in, even if your license doesn't expire for many years and you want to get the real ID compliant, you may do so. It will cost you $25. We can't avoid the fee, but you may do that and you may make an appointment to do that. Uh, again, the reason is we've got a federal law and a state law that, that, that make it all too confusing, but it is what it is. Now, you don't have to have this. If you don't want it, you don't have to have it. But know that as of October 1st of 2020, going to Sky Harbor, or if you're going to ride Amtrak or something like that, the TSA will not accept a driver license that is not real ID compliant. And that's fine if you want to take your passport or something else that is TSA compliant. There's a lot more of this that could be said. I can't even begin to really scratch the surface. I would suggest that if you go to our website, azdot.gov, or the TSA website, and just put in the search function real ID, it will give you a whole list of what you need to do. Again, it's October 1st of 2020 when this becomes effective, assuming nothing changes between now and then. So we're kind of caught in a tough place. We don't want to panic you, but we also don't want you to just not wa just keep waiting. If you do want it, you probably should get it sooner rather than later. You should have a follow-up. Sort of that law was signed uh, by Stan Napolitano before she became director. <laughs> yes. Well, and that's uh, that's what we face. So, um, yes, sir. Right. Through through he, the the question is about hybrid and energy efficient plates, the the white and blue cloud kind of plates you see for um, like Priuses and so forth. Um, state law limits that. I don't remember the number exactly, but there is a limited number of those plates that is available, and we have not been authorized to have more printed. Uh, we they, we have more sitting in storage but the law has capped that number and as you can imagine they are at a premium and people don't really like to give them up so the chances of you getting one depend really on did somebody leave the state that had one and they don't use it anymore did they not to be morbid did they pass away you know they don't need it anymore whatever um, so it's a very limited pool and um, it is what it is based upon state law having capped that, so it's, a, it's really the classic supply and demand, the, the demand outpaces the supply. Can you walk in and get it? Uh, only, only if... Yeah, you would, it would basically be, is, is there an availability when you, when you renew? It's, it's just going to be or if you're going to buy a car or you're going to get a, a new plate. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you can't. Do you, you have one now? Yep. Okay. Well, you, you should, you should be good. An, I used to have the hybrid plate. I used to have a Prius. Uh-huh. And then I sold the car. And right. And switched up now back to a hybrid. Right. It's not a Prius, but it qualifies. Right, it's right. It's an electric car. Right. It qualifies. However, I was told that I could get the plate because they're only issuing two, quote, unquote, electric cars. There may be some for fully electric cars. I, there, there may, in fact, be some that are strictly for not non-hybrid but fully electric cars, but there's not that many of those. You know what? Um, if, if you want to send me an email and I could have somebody dig deeper into that for your situation so I give you a better answer, I'd be happy to do that. Yes, sir. So there's been a lot of work on autonomous vehicles, particularly here in Sandhurst. Yeah. In fact, I saw Waymo out here while I was waiting to get in. The policy from the governor's office is that we are welcoming those companies to come here and do business, and we're not imposing any regulation on them. So they are here. Um, they, uh, they have the choice of either registering their vehicle here or uh, they may be registered in their home state, which is legal. There actually is a protocol, the international registration protocol. We've had questions about this where they see a, I think, it, I can't remember if it's Tesla or Google or one of those, or maybe Uber, <clears throat> where people say, well, how come I see a, um, an autonomous vehicle? 
with uh, California plates on it. That's perfectly legal. Just like you see rental cars sometimes in the last 20 years or so, you've noticed if you rent a car, it might have Florida plates on it, even though you rented it over here. Um, and that's because we have reciprocity with other states. If you are registered in your home state, your corporate headquarters, maybe California, uh, we actually get a percentage of the registration fees that's based on reciprocity. Yes, sir. I have a question. Um, if you have an autonomous car mm -hmm. and you uh, it's your sole mode, mode of transportation, uh, what kind of a driver's license would be issued in a situation like that with a car driving that car? <laughs> we haven't contemplated that just yet because uh, those cars have to have a driver with a, with a standard <laughs> license behind them, so we have not contemplated a... Uh, a, a different type of license that may be something that we look at, or actually, it probably would be more of a legislative function. Yeah, that's a question. Yes, sir. Um, there's a large autoplex going up in Scottsdale on the reservation. Yes, there is. Yeah, so, in terms of sales tax revenue that's generated, which is a major source of savings mm -hmm. for the state, how will that be handled? Is it six um, percent, whatever it is, on the reservation, or do you still have to pay sales tax? For the that's really not a function of MVD or ADOT. Um, my understanding of that um, is that uh, Scottsdale and the reservation have worked out some sort of arrangement. Um, as somebody who grew up in that area, I always thought it was surprising how there weren't dealers on that res much sooner than there are now. Um, but again, that would be something that the, the city managers and community managers over there would work out. Yeah, you can do that. And so we went and got him an, an ID, and it's amazing how many people don't know that they can do that, but there's no age restriction. That's true. Um, not every credential that you get through us is a driver license. You, you can get an ID for a, a minor, or if you don't happen to drive, which is hard to imagine in Phoenix, but there are people that do that and just want an ID, we can accommodate you. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a good, that's something I can take back from this meeting, and I can talk about that more. Absolutely. All right. Well, I just want to <laughs> I just want to say thank you. If you like what are your, what you heard, I love referrals. So if you like what you heard, tell somebody. If you didn't like what you heard, tell somebody you don't like and refer me anyway. So, thanks very much.